inside to double cover the slot receivers, leaving single coverage on the outside with Ford on Van Dyke. That's a mismatch as far as I look at it. Van Dyke's going to win that single coverage almost all day. O'Donnell read the coverage, went to the right guy. They moved the chains. First down, Jets. The Eagles have to tighten up. Jets, Ford. First down here in the first quarter. The give is to Morrell on the delay. And he's tripped up in the backfield for a loss of about one. Adrian Morrell, they gave a big contract. They paid a lot of money for an awful lot of people in the offseason to upgrade this offense. But here was a guy who they kept. He was theirs, and he still is. They love this guy. I talked to Ron Earhart again. I keep alluding to Ron Earhart. I think he's one of the best offensive coordinators in business. What he likes to do, though, is have a feature back. When he was with the Giants, he had O.J. Anderson. When he, when he was at Pittsburgh, he had Bam Morris and Barry Foster. He doesn't have that in New York. He may use three guys. There's Ron right there, considered one of the best in the business. Second and 10 at the 17. Pressure from the backside, but he gets it away. William Fuller coming from the backside. William Thomas on the tackle. Webster Slaughter with the grab for New York. Second, I'm sorry, third down and two at the nine now, Jaws. Once again, O'Donnell getting a lot of time in the pocket. Boom, there's the breakdown. Here comes Fuller, force him, force him out of the pocket. But Webster Slaughter is one of those veteran guys that's been around, as you see, from the end zone angle. Here comes Fuller, flushing the pocket. There's Slaughter with his arm up. Hey, I'm here, I'm here. Give me the ball. He finds him. Third and two. Morrell up the middle, down to about the six-yard line, met there and stopped by William Thomas, but it looks like enough for a first down. First and five at the five, Jaws. Carl, Carl, up to this point, the Eagles' defensive front four is not getting penetration, not blowing things up in the backfield. This is a much improved New York Jet offensive line. You know, when you bring in a David Williams and a Jumbo Elliott, these are two solid offensive tackles. And David Alexander, the center, been around a long time. This is a strong group up front for the Jets. Baxter and Morrell, the backs behind O'Donnell. The give is to Adrian Morrell over the right side for a gain of about one. Michael Zordich coming up from the strong safety spot to make the tackle for the Eagles. When you get in this situation, this is where your safeties have to be hitters. Of course, Michael Zordich is that kind of football player. He will get nosy. He will be up the line of scrimmage trying to blow things up in the backfield. But again, in this situation, it's sellout time. You're committing 11 guys. Hey, you've only got 14 yards to cover. You ought to be able to do it. Former Penn Stater calling the defensive signals for the Eagles. Again, Baxter Morrell behind. Man in motion. Play action. Wide open. Fred Baxter, the backup tight end for the Jets, wide open, but O'Donnell overthrows him just a bit. Catchable ball? Well, it was close, but this is one O'Donnell's got to put right on the money. Don Griffin just got sucked in by the play action and allowed Baxter to go right behind him. Boy, these are ones, it's like, uh, you know, dropping that uh, dollar in the toll booth there. You've got to hit these. Neal makes a nice fake, sets nice. You'll see him get a little air under it. That ball is overthrown. That's a tough catch. Uh, that's, that's not a good throw by Neil O'Donnell. You'll see it here. And I think what you see, Neil did not set his feet. Well, he kind of threw off the back foot, leaning away. He had an ample time to set, deliver. Should have been a jet touch touchdown. Third and goal at the four. Little trouble on the exchange, and Morrell is stopped. James Willis, the middle linebacker, comes over and makes the stop on third and four. The Jets will try and now even the count with a field goal attempt. 68. Willis once again making the play. These are the kinds of plays that Ray Rhodes wants to see made by his middle linebacker. When you get down to this situation, hey, your middle linebacker is a guy that's running free. You're putting five, six, and seven guys in a down position saying, hey, linebacker, scrape and make plays. Hey, Ray Rhodes would like the play that Willis made right there. Nick Lowry, number three all time in scoring in the NFL. Make this easily. And he does. We are tied. Rich Kotites, New York Jets, Ray Rhodes Eagles tied three apiece here at the Vet. And an eight at the 26 for the Jets. Good penetration there by William Fuller as he makes the tackle on Adrian Morrell. William Fuller, the three-time pro bowler and a guy who is teaching Greg Jefferson how to play that left 
defensive end for the Eagles in the future. Well, William Fuller is an outstanding pro, and he's matched uh, on that particular play against Jumbo uh, Elliott and does an outstanding job right there. Excuse me, that's David Williams on their, their right tackle spot, and he does an outstanding job of staying with them, playing it off, and making the tackle. 39, out of the shotgun. From the 27-yard line, Van Dyke in motion. Flags are already in the air. The pass out to Morrell. Michael Zordich puts him out of bounds, but let's find out what this series of flags is all about. Offside. Number 96 lined up in the neutral zone. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Well, you can see Ray Rhodes not very happy at all with Mark Gunn, number 96, as you just heard, lined up in the neutral zone. Third penalty for the Eagles, minus 35 yards. And Ray Rhodes has stressed all week in practice. He does not want to see mistakes. Discipline, discipline, discipline. These are breakdowns in discipline. That's why right now the Jets are dominating play in this first quarter. And they've got another chance here now, third and four. Quick pitch from the shotgun to Morrell. Good penetration there. Brian Dawkins, number 24, read it, came up, and stuffed that play. Kinsler as well coming over to help make that tackle. As we look on the replay with O'Donnell in the shotgun, this is, it's almost a passing play. They like to get the ball in the perimeter with the wide receiver coming down. Boy, that's a great play by Dawkins. Coming into the backfield, blowing up the play by taking on the blocker. That's the kind of play you like to see out of a young safety, or Carl, any safety. Yeah, anybody on your defense, make that penetration and just stuff it. That's the end of the first quarter. The Eagles and the Jets are all tied at three. 3 the Jets are going to try and do something about that. We're going to go down to Don Tollison before he does, though. Tolly? Hey, Carl, I was watching that play with Bobby Taylor, the great quarterback of the Eagles, who was a rookie a year ago. He's being held out as a Troy Vincent. They don't want to have any nagging injury problems. And they were just delighted to see Brian Dawkins come up big. The Eagles want Ronnie Lott-type plays from Brian Dawkins. Back upstairs. Well, they certainly got one. A 22-yarder for Nick Lowry earlier. And he will attempt to put the Jets in the lead for the first time. the hole to Frank Wright and it is good a 39 yarder this time again to go along with that 30 I'm sorry 22 yarder the Jets have taken the lead it's now six to three New York over the Eagles six to three the Eagles trailing the Jets Nick Lowry a 39 yarder field goal to put him in front and show us how ugly are these first quarter statistics well you really can't play any worse than the Eagles have played in this first quarter as you can see in the time of possession the Jets have had the ball for 12 and a half minutes dominated rushing passing and total yardage not a good first quarter for the Eagles from two yards deep in his end zone Kevin Bowie brings it out to about the 17 or 18 where Rick Hamilton makes the special team stop for the Jets. I'm Carl Churkin along with Ron Jaworski and Don Tolleson. Glad you could join us tonight on our flagship station, WTXF Fox Philadelphia, and on WOLF TV in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, and WPMT in York on the Eagles Football Network. You know, Carl, uh, uh, Ray Rhodes did not intend to play Ricky Waters into the second quarter. I think he is so upset with this offensive performance at this point, Ricky Waters is still in the game. He needs to get something going offensively, get some confidence in that, uh, that running game. And as you can see, Rodney Pete now the quarterback for the Eagles, their first possession of the second quarter. They give on the inside, flags on the play once again. Not much going inside there. He's... You can see the frustration on Ricky Waters' expression as well. Ricky Waters is a fierce competitor. He wants the football. I'm sure he's over at the sideline telling John Gruden, get me the ball. We're not moving it. Let's make something happen here. I can make something happen. He exudes a lot of confidence in that offense, but right now, that offensive line is not moving anyone. Ricky has nowhere to go. 
Look at that face, the expression. You, you know, you don't have to say a word. You can right. just read the facial expression. Last year, the Eagles were the number four oh, rushing team in the NFL. Number 73 of the offense. Penalized half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Lester Holmes coming back from knee surgery. The guilty party, number 73. And uh, he was in uh, Ray Rhodes' doghouse after his performance last week against the Ravens. Uh, Ray was not happy. Uh, kind of uh, pointed the finger at him uh, in the couple days uh, post-game. And right there, that is not going to make Ray happy. A holding call. 6'3", 305, and a whole lot of rust after being out most of last year. First and 19. Pete gets it out to Ricky Waters. Out to about the 17-yard line, Mo Lewis on the coverage. This is a very positive play. This is what Rodney Pete brings to the table. As we look at Ricky Waters coming out of the backfield, Rodney sets in the pocket, reads he's got him singled up on Mo Lewis. Ricky does a nice job of pushing up the field, squaring his shoulders, breaking to the outside. Hey, that's what you got to do when, you, when you're struggling offensively. Take the high percentage throw. You see Rodney stays in that pocket, delivers not a perfect throw, but in a position where Ricky could catch it. But when you get Ricky Waters singled up on a linebacker, the chances are he's going to win. Good pass blocking there by number 74, Steve Wallace, driving his man around Rodney Pete. Pete again stays in the pocket, throws out on the near sideline, the catch by Irving Fryer, just flicks it back into his hands, and the Eagles have a first down. Carl, what really made this play, Ricky Waters, we just spoke about him as a receiver. You see him set in the pocket right there. Boom, here comes the blitz. He picks it up. That's what makes this play happen. Now you have the single coverage on the outside with Irving Fryer working one-on-one -on -one with a lot of room. Irving Fryer can make this catch. This guy is an unbelievable athlete. Been around this game a long time. Again, a competitor. You get him singled up, he's going to win. He was not happy with his performance against Baltimore. Fred McCrary now in his fullback for the Eagles. And, of course, Irving Fryer, a 20-yard first down. 20-yard pickup by Fryer, and a first down again. Flags on the play. Ricky not happy. There's too much penetration in the backfield. Jim Vicarella, who coordinates that jet defense, is a Bud Carson disciple. He likes to, to have penetration and get in the backfield. And right now, they've been successful. Illegal shift. Two men moving by the offense. Penalties decline. Second down. 13.30 remaining in the second quarter. Let's go down to Don Tolleson. Hey, Carl and Josh, I was with Ricky Waters up at Lehigh University the other day. Uh, man loves steam, clams. We had about an hour and a half conversation over it. He said the key for him tonight, he wants this offensive line, the first unit, to get a lot of play, a lot of continuity developed for the rushing game. So you'll like to see those starters in there pretty much for a long time here. Carl? Thanks, Tally. That's the problem. If he would give those linemen stake, they wouldn't jump off sides. Long pass for Fryer, a little underthrown, but he comes back, makes the catch, and an eagle first down at the 23-yard line. Otis Smith in pretty good shape there, Jaws, but Fryer makes the adjustment, comes back, and makes the catch. You see the former eagle, number 45, Otis Smith. Cannot stay with Irving Fryer. You'll see this is a design go pattern. Again, the Jets coming with the blitz. Rodney hangs in the pocket. Knows he's got the single coverage outside. A hair underthrown. But this is what Irving Fryer brings to your football team. Athleticism. He goes up and takes the football away. He's also a fierce competitor. As you can see, Irving Fryer getting better with age. And tonight, as we see Charlie Garner coming in for the first time, gets his hands on the ball right away. A gain of about one over the right side. Two catches, Irving Fryer in this drive. A 20-yarder and that 38-yarder just moments ago. A total of 58 yards on two receptions. Rodney Pete to Irving Fryer had the Eagles in New York Jets territory. Carl, uh, this morning we had a chance to talk to Ray Rhodes, and we know coming into this game, he wanted the offensive line to pick up its run-blocking tempo. Up until this point with 11.57 left in the second quarter, they have not done that. Second and nine, Eagles at the 23. Mark Say in motion to the top of your screen. Blitz picked up. He hits Fryer again. Rodney Pete hangs in there on the blitz. 
finds Irving Fryer on the quick post, and the Eagles are inside the five. Can't do it any better than this. This is outstanding recognition by the entire Eagles offense. Not only Rodney Pete, the quarterback, but Irving Fryer right here. He knows the blitz is coming. He breaks quick to the inside in that vacated area by the linebackers and the safeties. This is what a veteran player like Irving Fryer brings to your football team. Of course, Rodney Pete, he dropping in the pocket. The man right up the middle. He reads it, unloads the football, knows, hey, his guy, man on man, if it's Irving Fryer, he's going to get the catch, and he does. Second year quarterback Aaron Glenn just hanging on for dear life at the end. First and goal at the two. Ricky Waters over the right side has it down to about the one. 